Hey guys, this is GM Josh, and I've been asked by a few folks to go through how I use extended tasks and the extended task token that I've created in my Star Trek Adventure games on Roll20. So first of all, I'm going to show you guys how I create the token, and I'm doing this in Sketch. You don't really have to go this fancy. You could clear out all the fields and manually input the text on Roll20 or just leave it out and use the status bars if you wanted. But like I said, I like to make it a little more fancy, so I go in first and I'll change the title to something catchy and then set the numbers here to, to what they should be for the task. And uh, pay attention to the, the colors here in particular. So difficulty red, work track green, and breakthroughs are blue. This matters when we go back into Roll20 because this corresponds to the status bars for the token. And uh, I'll go over the rules really quickly for extended tasks. This is not meant to be a tutorial on how to run extended tasks. Uh, there's plenty for that. Uh, but we're just really following what's the uh, the core rules in the core rulebook for the Star Trek extended task. So uh, when you start off, you have a difficulty, and this is the number that uh, your crew are using to to actually start getting things done in the extended task. In this case, the difficulty is three. So what they'll do is they'll roll their attributes to discipline, just like usual, and buy extra dice if they want. And this is the difficulty that they need to match. And then if if they've managed to uh, they've managed to pass this difficulty, they could bank any momentum and use uh, based off of that table in the core rulebook on, on increasing stuff done for extended tasks. Uh, but let's say they've passed the difficulty, then what they'll do is take their discipline that they rolled in the check, take that number and add two dice, and that's what they'll roll to achieve work that goes on the work track. And that's what the work track here in green is representing. Uh, and then if, if they've got any uh, following the rules again from the book. If they've got any breakthroughs, we track those because once they have the number of breakthroughs equal to the magnitude, then they've completed the task and they're done. But what also happens is over time, as they increase in breakthroughs, let's say they get one breakthrough, then you decrease the difficulty of the task by one also. So I get one breakthrough, my difficulty here would go down to two and then down to one and et cetera. So we're gonna need to keep track of all of this in roll 20. So let's jump over and see, see how I'm doing that. So what I've done is I've taken that graphic that I exported from Sketch, I exported it as a JPEG and I brought it in as a token into Roll20. And then I created a character sheet inside of Roll20 and inside this, uh, assigned the token to that character. You're never gonna use the character for anything else. This is mostly so that you can track it and then also so that you can do an extended task over time. Like if I were to remove my token here, I can just bring it back in and my progress would, would still be tracked. So that's mostly why I'm doing that. But let me show you the character sheet. Uh, what I did is I went in the attributes and I created three different attributes for this character that we're tracking. There's difficulty, work track, and breakthroughs. So for difficulty, because we're starting at three and we're trying to get down to zero, the max here is three, and the current number, we're starting at three and going downward again. Uh, for work track, what we're tracking here for work is 10 but we're starting at zero. This is what the players are gonna build up to as they can, as they progress. The same with breakthroughs. The breakthrough number here, the max, corresponds to the difficulty for the task, and it's also gonna start at zero. And then looking at the token, if you wanna see how, how I'm tracking that, on my bars, I've got the work track in green, which corresponds to the green on the token. Also red for difficulty, and then blue for breakthroughs. So let's just do a quick demo. I've got my fantastic chief medical officer Nix here. He's going to run through some, uh, run through this task, and uh, we're we're going to ignore momentum for now. But the way that works is uh, the difficulty that they're rolling against. It's just like in any other case when when they're using their their d20s and they're buying extra dice. If you if they generate momentum, they can use that here to make the extended task go faster. But like I said, just for the the purpose of an example, any momentum I generate here, I'm just going to ignore it. And I'm also giving Nix a lot more dice than he would probably normally run through this task. I'm giving him four just so we can burn through it and you guys can see what's going on. Uh, but for him, his difficulty is going to be three. I'm going to use this medicine and control. Uh, and of course, you know, when you're on YouTube, things will go wrong. He's got two successes, so he actually did not achieve anything to continue on the extended task. So let's see this again. All right, there we go, that's plenty of successes. So all I needed were three, and he's got six here, so normally he would get three momentum that he could use for the next step of the extended task, but we're just gonna discard this for now. His medicine discipline is four, so I'm gonna take four and add two, and that's how many challenge dice that I'm gonna roll to see his progress on the work track here.
All right, so he's got three work here. There's no resistance, which normally, this is just like starship combat. You would subtract the amount of work he had from resistance, but since he has resistance zero, I've got a work track of 10. Uh, that's what I've got to get to to make a breakthrough on my work track. But my work track is starting at a zero. I'm going to take the three that he rolled. And there we go. We're going from three. Uh, we're building up to 10. If we get 10, then we make a breakthrough. So we're going to do again. Do another check. Ah, again, plenty of successes. Forgetting about momentum. Just because. Rolling his challenge dice again. He's got four. Oh, this is going to take a while. Seven on his work track, building up to ten again to get a breakthrough. And right, we're going to do this again. All right, complication. That would be fun. But four successes. That's all we need. So again, we're going to roll a uh, challenge dice here. All right, now I finally get to show you guys some, some good stuff. So uh, first of all, he has rolled more than five on this challenge dice roll. So just like Starship Combat, where that would give you a breach, here that gives you a breakthrough. Changing my breakthrough score to one, and also decrease my difficulty to two. But also another thing, fun thing that's happened is since his work track was at seven, how many have I got here? I've got six. So we were actually going to increase to 10 and then restart over to 3 since we exceeded 10. It's also going to give us another breakthrough since we finished the work track. And then also decrease the difficulty to 1. So we're almost there. We're doing another roll and hopefully this will fill us up so you, can, you guys can see this all finished. Again, this would be really fun. I would... I would have lots of fun as a GM with this complication, but I'm just going to ignore it for now and also the additional momentum because he's got the difficulty of one easily handled here. All right, four on the work track. Getting there. <laughs> one success. Uh, we only have one difficulty, that's right. So in this case, he does succeed. Uh, seven that's this is this is gonna be plenty so what happens here is since we've exceeded 10 on our work track we'll increase the breakthroughs to one or by one to three and since that matches the magnitude three breakthroughs here equals three magnitude we are done and Nix has successfully completed the extended task so hopefully this has been useful for you guys this is this is how I've been handling extended tasks tracking in our game roll 20. We don't use them that much. Um, there's probably a lot better ways to automate it, but this is working well for us. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, I'd love to hear those. Thanks and take care. Bye.